Rugby is a simple game. It's about playing together and playing as a team. Solidarity, togetherness, and unity. For a game that has been around for 200 years, it wasn't until 60 years ago that the sport came to the Bronx, New York. There were about five or six of them, and they had this very unusually shaped ball. And so uh, it was the ball, I think, that attracted me to the small group of guys. And I asked, you know, what are y'all doing? And uh, they explained that they were uh, looking to start a rugby club at, at the school. And I talked a little bit about what that meant and asked if I could, you know, join them. And they said, yes. It was a great group of guys, always has been. And uh, that, that chemistry was very important to uh, things getting started. Oh, there was, I mean, there was a, a sense of uh, school pride, obviously, uh, but also a sense of responsibility because you you were starting something new at the school and you wanted to individually, you wanted to contribute so that it was done right. And so that people were not only uh, comfortable, the school was comfortable with what you were doing, but that the team members were, were satisfied, were pleased, wanted to do more of it. We never got any crowds at our games. I mean, there was an awful lot of nobody else but the occasional girlfriend, wife, parent, maybe a, another student who happened to be walking by and saw us, and was curious about what was going on. So there was never a crowd effect. It, it was the game and the, and the team members and the competition. Fordham in the 1900s was very football dominant as the team was led by the namesake of the current Super Bowl trophy, Vince Lombardi, and the seven blocks of granite. At the beginning, not many people knew about the sport, and a lot of the ones who had already joined transitioned from other sports. Well, I was playing football down at Fordham for a couple of years, and when I stopped playing football, some of the guys from the football team were on the rugby team. And it wasn't the, the same commitment that you had with football, like football was, you know, seven days a week almost. Uh, rugby was more of a club kind of setting, so you practiced a couple of days a week. Um, you know, it wasn't that time commitment, which was my problem, so uh, it was a little easier as far as that goes. It was not as strict as probably most other sports. You know, you didn't have a coach standing over you, do it again, do this, do that. You know, you tried to get um, some, not understanding, but you tried to get some familiarity with what you're supposed to be doing, how you're supposed to be doing it, uh, and then it's just sort of a practice makes perfect because I think for most of us, uh, it was a relatively new game, you know, so we were trying to learn so many ins and outs of exactly like, you know, what, if there are penalties, what are they and how do you avoid and stuff like that. So that uh, practices had to do with things like that just to sort of get us to understand um, the whole concept of it. By the time the 1980s rolled around, the club had a little bit more structure, but still had the same open arms mentality from 20 years prior. It really was uh, an amazing experience. And uh, I just remember coming onto the pitch the first time, uh, second semester, freshman year, how everybody welcomed me with open arms, you know, not knowing whether I would be good or, or bad or, you know, the life of the party or someone dull, you know? Uh, the, the embrace and the warmth that I got was really uh, very, very meaningful and special to me. It was more than just a sport. You weren't playing because you were looking for a scholarship. You weren't playing because you were looking to go be pro. You were playing as part of a team, and I think the team is what held you there. That friendship, those great times, that's, that's what propelled me wanted me to play year after year. Even my senior year, when I got really injured, it's all about the friendship, it's all about the camaraderie, it's all about the drink-ups and the fun that you have there. So that's what it was about. I, I love my time playing rugby at Fordham. I love that sense of camaraderie and teammate and teamwork. So I always have fond memories of it. The classes of the 80s were, in a way, the first of their kind 
as many of them continue to hang out to this very day. When we get together 35 years later, 35 years plus, by the way, this is all we talk about. Sometimes we talk about politics, sometimes we talk about our kids, but it always goes back to the Fordham rugby. So it's definitely left an, an indelible mark um, on my life and, and um, you know, my relationship with my friends. It's great. It's great, right? Some of us see each other regularly, and we've been out of college 33 years, I think. That's a bond that we will never have you know, broken, and, and I think it's paid off the money. As if you never left, as if you just played last weekend or something like that. You know, obviously, we've all aged and everything else, but uh, getting together with the team is uh, it, it's great. You just bring back you know, memories, you talk about how you played together, how you partied together. It's usually more about the party and whatnot, but uh, it was a great experience uh, every time. It hasn't always been a smooth ride for the club. After a misunderstanding with the university in the 90s, the team started practicing off campus at Van Cortlandt Park. The, the trickiest part was that we didn't play any of our home matches on Eddie's Parade. So we were at Van Cortlandt Park. We had to basically put that together week in, week out. There was a bar that Columbia uh, Business School kept their goal posts and their pads. We would put uh, goal posts together out of you know PVC piping. We would have to line the field and, and we would have to walk the field to make sure there were no bottle caps, uh, rocks, and hypodermic needles as well. It made us tough. I mean, we were playing on Van Cortland Park. You know, we were putting up the post. My father would have to build the post before the game, but I think it gave us an edge going into those. I don't think we would have won so much my junior and senior year if we didn't have those years playing on Van Cortland, cleaning up the glass before the games and things like that. The 2000s also saw the revival of a men's rugby club, Old Maroon. So I actually helped restart the Old Maroon team that was with the NYPD. And I was affiliated with Old Maroon for literally 10 years. And then, you know, work got busy. There was a team in the 70s. I think they kind of folded in. But when we graduated, we had a lot of success while we were there. We won a couple titles, so we wanted to keep playing. So we started Old Maroon as kind of a way to, to keep playing. I think the original Rams, some of them graduated, you know, played for NIAC. And then there was another group that founded Old Maroon, the original iteration of it. Eventually down the road, they merged uh, with uh, Essex and they became Amex, Old Maroon Essex, as a, and were a very strong club. And then when we graduated, we were looking again to, you know, we knew there were uh, men's clubs and we wanted to, we were a very insular group and we didn't want to play rugby with anybody else. So Jeff was instrumental in founding uh, the most recent iteration of Old Maroon, and we've kept it going, you know, since then. The 2010s and 2020s only saw much more of the same mentality. The team, a couple years out after I graduated, posted the position was open, and I had very, very limited. I mean, my rugby IQ and coaching experience was really, really low. I knew they had a good support system in Brother Joe, who uh, was a Jesuit regent at the school. Evan Sheeha, the golden boot as he was known, actually put out, you know, hired me and, you know, I, I was stuck around for, for 14 years in different capacities after that. Once I took the Xavier AD job, you know, I, I hung on uh, as much as I could that first year because we had just qualified for the CRCs, the, the full tournament, uh, for, the, for the spring of 2019. So I knew that I, I wanted to see the boys through into that tournament. Um, and, and since then, you know, it, it was clear that there was no possible way that I would be able to effectively do the AD job justice at Xavier while also staying on as, as full-time director. You know, we've had Federico Reinhardt has been lifeblood of this program since I left. Just giving, as a full volunteer head coach, giving his time and expertise. Last fall, Jared Smallwood, who graduated uh, with that, that class of 2020, he's been working with Rooney as one of the assistants to the general manager there, Steve Lewis. Jared reached out and, and said, you know, hey, would, Fede and the, and the guys be interested in maybe some guest coaches for our, 
uh, training camp. Uh, he's like, Ben Foden is interested in getting into coaching. Uh, so, and, you know, thinking of a name like Ben Foden, I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. Like, Ben Foden's going to be interested. I was like, he'd come up and help with skills. You know, and then he was he was dedicated. I mean, he was getting there for the because you know training camp is is a two a day situation. We operate around the, the varsity program, so usually the morning session is pretty early. And and Fodes was getting up super early, getting there. You know, running the fitness and the and the skill sessions. I look forward to seeing the continued uh, growth of the program over the coming years with Ben. With 2022 being the 60th year of Fordham Rugby, the club has been around more than long enough to impact everyone's life who has been a part of it. To see, you know, Fordham Rugby thriving um, at this point, giving out scholarships, that's something that, you know, back in the mid 80s would be like, are you, are you kidding me? Um, so it represents a great deal of progress and it warms my heart. Well, I think it's great. I mean, like anything else, I mean, 60 years is a long time to keep an organization going, particularly a club. You know, we didn't have the benefit of, of being a varsity sport, where the school would be putting funding aside for us. So the fact that the team has made it for them is just incredible. It's that sense of camaraderie, and it's that sense of form, the sense of you're an alumni, you play rugby, you feel like you're one of the team. It's just a great feeling. It's great to enjoy that and, and experience it going back. It's great to see how serious they're getting. It's nice to see them on tour. It's nice to, to read about them in the publications. I think they've really done a nice job. and uh, It's definitely uh, something to be proud of from, from where we started on Bay Cortland Park to where they are now. If you look at my wedding party, every one of them, I played rugby. Every one of them. So I, I'm still uh, deeply connected with you know, the, the guys I played with uh, collegiately still text one another it's a pretty vicious group chat uh, that, that I'm on even if we're far away or we're, we're traveling a lot or we haven't seen one another in a while um, when we do get together it's it, you know the, the connection's still there and it's as if we, we, we haven't missed a beat. As a former player myself the brotherhood that these ruggers are talking about is a very real thing it's more than a game it's a bond for life. Doc Cordaro, he's an unsung hero uh, of the program, uh, without a doubt. Um, you know, he, he's gone to bat for us time and time again. And I, I'm thankful he was at the alumni match this, this uh, August. Um, you know, we celebrated the 60th anniversary at the alumni match. He will be, he will be sorely missed, mm -hmm. sorely, sorely missed.